journalists managed to talk to Russian conscripts captured in Kursk. They all tell the same stories. None of them had combat experience and there was nothing to defend themselves with. We retreated without a fight. Only mortars and drones were firing at us. Mortars and drones. We retreated 28 people. The whole platoon. There was not a single wounded and there were no fatalities either, said one of the conscripts of the Radio Liberty Project, Donbass Rili. He served on the border between Russia and Ukraine for four months and claims that he understood that it was dangerous there, but he had no idea that the Ukrainian armed forces would break through. Another prisoner said that they didn't even know exactly where they were. And after the Ukrainian troops advanced, they simply went into the forest. We spent two nights somewhere in the forests, moved during the day closer to evening and then walked again during the day. We looked for water and food. We hadn't eaten or drunk for a long time. We found our position, a mortar, a cannon. Until the moment they took us, I didn't see a single person, only drones and that's it, he said. According to the third person at the beginning of their military service, they were not told anything about the war and that they would take part in it. Even the demobilized soldier reassured them, saying that everything was calm in Sudza. He basically said that when he was in Sudza, something was constantly happening in Belgorod, sabotage and reconnaissance groups or drones were flying. In principle, he says, there is nothing terrible about it. That's all. He came to Sudza. Hourly service. Everything is quite calm, he said, about conversations with the demobilized soldier and his first months in service. The conscripts admitted that they were scared only in the first minutes after they were captured. They say that there were various rumors among their fellow soldiers about what was happening to prisoners in Ukraine. They said that prisoners of war are beaten, abused and not fed. But when we were captured, they immediately changed our clothes and gave us the opportunity to wash. They feed us three times a day. They give us bed linen, clean. No one complains. Everything is fine, said a captured conscript. All three say that they joined the service only to avoid problems with work in the future. After the exchange, they do not want to return to the army. Russian conscripts who were captured in the Kursk region are not forced to work, are allowed to play board games and are fed meat and vegetables. According to the wife of one of the prisoners of war, the conscript's conditions are like those of a pioneer camp. The Western-backed Palestinian Authority held a funeral procession Monday for a U.S.-Turkish dual national activist who a witness says was shot and killed by Israeli forces while demonstrating against settlements in the occupied West Bank. Dozens of mourners including several leading PA officials attended the procession. Security forces carried the body of Asener Ezge Eji which was draped in a Palestinian flag while a traditional black and white checkered scarf covered her face. The 26-year-old's body was then placed into the back of a Palestinian ambulance. Turkish Foreign Ministry spokesman Ankyu Kesali said Turkey was working on repatriating Eji's body for burial in the Aegean coastal town of Didim as per her family's wishes. U.S. officials did not respond to a request for comment. Jonathan Pollock, an Israeli peace activist who participated in Friday's protest, said Israeli forces shot her on Friday in the city of Nablus while posing no threat. He added that the killing happened during a period of calm after clashes between soldiers and Palestinian protesters. Pollock said he then saw two Israeli soldiers mount the roof of a nearby home, train a gun in the group's direction and fire, with one of the bullets striking A.G. in the head. The Israeli military said it was looking into reports that troops had killed a foreign national while firing at an instigator of violent activity in the area of the protest. The West Bank has seen a surge of violence since the Israel-Hamas war began in October, with increasing Israeli raids, attacks by Palestinian militants on Israelis, and attacks by Israeli settlers on Palestinians.